What's going on today is Monday. And as you guys know, every single Monday we come at you, we spit fire, we spit the truth, and nothing but the truth. That's my boy. E money, e crizzle, e shizzle, e dizzle, e whizzle in the house today. Today I'm we're gonna back. talk about what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we gonna talk about today, bro? We're gonna talk about the difference between having an extremist mindset versus living life on the spectrum. And when I say on the spectrum, <laughs> oh, really? I mean a little bit of gray area. Okay, know, uh, okay. Versus everything has to be black so, and white or all the way to the max. So, so my boy is wearing gray because he respects the gray color. And uh, I actually think that being in the gray sucks. I, as you guys can tell, I'm very, 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 very extreme in my thinking sometimes. But I think that being an extreme thinker is helpful because... You have to go all in, in my opinion. And if you're not all in, you're either all in or all out. That's my mentality. You can't be like half ass into something. And a lot of people, they struggle with going all in in anything they're doing. They have a challenging time, a difficult time with being all in in their relationships with their spouse or relationship with their friends, relationship with their business partners. They have a hard time by going all in in their work and just, just, just going all in and just jumping into the pool without tippy-toeing and t testing out the temperature and shit like that. I think most people, once they fully commit to something, they give their best to something. And that's my opinion. You have to give your best by committing. By committing and going all the way in, that's the chance you have an opportunity to show people how amazing you are, how, 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 how impactful you can be in whatever it is that you're doing. So I think that being an extremist is a healthy way of living life because what's the point of living if you're just going to do 70% of the effort? When, when, when most people, what they do is they put 70% of the effort or 40% of the effort and they complain and cry why they're not where they want to be. I always talk about like the, when you want to bo you know, boil water, it has to hit 212 degrees. You can't do it at 211, 210. Try that at home. You'll see what happens. Nothing will boil, right? So if you want water to boil, you have to go 212 degrees or more, and that's the mentality. It's either 212 and above or just get the fuck out. That's my mentality. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think I agree in, the, in a lot of ways. Going all in is important. Um, I just think sometimes if you push things too far or too much or you just keep pushing all the way to the max, you can either get burnt out or you can ruin relationships or create – you know, too much conflict in, in what you're doing. So for me, I, I, I like to go all in on certain things. I just feel like sometimes there's more gray than just black and white in certain things. You but, know? That, but that's where you see the gray areas where you get confused and lost and in pain and, and they just bull. Like a lot of times you have no clarity when you're in the gray area. Like I hate being in cloudy situations or like situations where it's like not like black or white. Like okay, I, I'll give an example though where, where I think – we differ a little bit. So let's say... Which is, by the way, which is this is why our relationship is so amazing. We, we, I like to be around people that disagree with me a little bit because it's important to have a different perspective. Because there's a lot of, a, a lot of ideas that he has given me that I'm like, whoa, I would never agree with... I, I would never agree to that because I spent a lot of time with him and seeing his perspective, I started to change my belief system a little bit. Because you want to be around people that challenge your belief system. You want to be around people that challenge your thinking. Otherwise, what's the point? If you think you have all the answers, it's not the right way to live, right? So I like it when you challenge the, the ideas that I have and sometimes give me that different perspective. So what do you think? And be genuine. Like, what is it? Because I know we disagree on this, but what do you think when it comes to, you know, uh, that, that mentality? I just... I never really personally go too far in the in the extreme in any specific one area of my life. I think like if I'm going to be healthy, I try to be really healthy, but I never gonna go you know too far, too far, too far all the way to one side or to the other. Um, so I just kind of I don't I wouldn't say I live in the middle. I push myself a little bit, but once I kind of get you know a little bit past um, a, the area of comfort zone, I like to kind of hover in that area a little bit. So you like to stay in the comfort zone? Well, I wouldn't say the comfort zone. I like to push myself past the comfort zone, but I wouldn't just keep going, keep going, keep going all the way till, you know, till the end of whatever road that yeah, but I, I, th I think that being being having an obsessive personality helps you in so many ways because you literally can compete in levels that most people can't even, you know, can't even imagine. Like, Anytime I played any video games or anything I did in business, like I always try to go all in in what I did, and I was I would I would be a little bit fanatical, but that fanatical approach, that obsessive approach, got me the results that I wanted to get. So I think that being all in helps you in so many ways. Like yes, you may lose a couple of friends, but those friends weren't really friends. If you really think about it, they were just acquaintances or buddies you wanted to hang out with or chill with. But having that all in, like I'm gonna go fucking blasted this week and work six days this week, seven day for rest, cause God created the world in six days, like rest and seven day, awesome, I'm gonna follow that process, I'm gonna bust my ass morning till night, 
What's wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with going all in and accomplishing your goals and your dreams? And I'm not saying you need to go all in for the rest of your life, but like, I get an example. Like, this is just, hum I humbly can say this. I have busted my ass for over a decade of consistent, pure dog, work ethic, grind, push and shove. I did it for years, and you saw me do that in some of those years. I busted my ass. I'll be working at times where you'll be like, you'll be chilling, and I'll be working. And there was nothing wrong with that. And I just saw to myself, I said to myself this every single waking moment that I had at that time in my 20s, in my 20s, right? I just wanted to make sure that if anyone asked me, what did I do on September 8th of 2016? I would say, no fucking idea, but I know I busted my fucking ass that day. And if you ask me what I did in my 20s, 90 plus percent of my 20s, was no chill, was no hanging out, 90% or more was work ethic. Okay, so how do you know when to not put? I'll give you like an example. Let's say I get into an argument with my girl or a girl, whatever. And I'm like, you're like, what happened? I'm like, I ah, don't worry about it. No, no, what happened? What happened? What happened? Nah, I don't worry about it. Nah, nah. No, come on, tell me what happened. What happened? And you just keep pushing, 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 pushing. Yeah, but so how's you get your answer? So it's like push, 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 push okay. all the way to the max and somebody's back against the wall and it's like, you know. But sometimes, okay, I'll give you an example. When you're sitting down, with a, that may not be a good example because I'm not going to push. If someone wants to be private with their information, I'm not going to push to death to the point they hate me. But if it's a customer or if it's a product that I know for a fact that I need to get in someone's hand. Like this is what a lot of salespeople make mistakes. They have an amazing product. They have a product. But they're not willing to push to the point where they're so obsessed with the product and it's so obsessed with changing that person's life, they don't know how to push in the right way, in the right angle. So I'm not going to say, you need the product, you need the product, you need No, but I'm going to find an avenue of this. I'm going to try this avenue, this avenue. I'm going to try so many different avenues to say, hey, you need this f***ing product. I'll give you an example. Anyone that comes to me for coaching, I know for a fact, 100%, if it's when it comes to a sales team, or training your sales team, or anything to do with processes and stuff like that, I know that I'm really f***ing good at that. So when you come to me and you say, Michael, I got a problem, I got an issue, I'm struggling here, I'm suffering here, and you don't want to pay whatever it costs, 10, 50, whatever the f***ing amount is, in my mind, I'm like, wait a minute, I know for a fact that if you pay that amount of money, let's just put it in an example, if you pay 10 grand, I know for a fact I can double, triple, quadruple that, Knowing if you just do what I say you're going to do, just follow the process, it will fucking work for you. So if I don't push and I don't shove and I don't fucking be all in on what I'm selling, how the hell am I going to serve that person? Now, I'm not saying I need to, you know, make them be poor, give them the last $10,000 or whatever it may be, but I'm going to push. I'm going to shove. I'm going to be all in because I know for a fact that if I'm going to do something with someone, I'm going to serve them and go all in for them. I guess my thing would be there's nothing wrong with going all in or being black or white or being you know, extreme. I just think for me personally, and I think most people don't live extreme in every area of their life. So it can be very alarming for some people, you know, when they meet someone, I'm not saying you are that person, but as an example, who tends to be very extreme in almost all, you know, areas of their life, it could be, you know, but check this out. To be can I be honest with you? Let me ask you a question. Do I have an extreme life? Do I want an extreme life is the question. Right, so you may ask yourself this question, do I have an extreme life? No. Do I want an extreme life? Probably yes. So guess what? You need to do some extreme. Think about that. Everybody wants the crazy life. They want the crazy, the yachts, the boats, the Miami life every day. They want all that. So they want to have an average life. They want to have a, a sorry, want to have an extreme lifestyle with an average work ethic or average mentality. So think about that. Well, there's okay a difference between average and extreme because I think there's a there's a big gap there. You know, you could push yourself and, and yeah, but and you can. A, like for example, yeah. someone that makes 300, 400 grand a year is not average. Someone that's making 300, 400 grand a year is above average. I mean, there's certain things that I respect and admire. Like as far as like, if you look at, you know, I was watching that Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary. Oh, that's if he wasn't, Woo! if he wasn't as extreme yes. as he was, he never would have won. You know, all those. I mean, bro, he became he became and, amazing you know, in, in, in um, bodybuilding. He became amazing in. In, in, in movies, he became amazing in, 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 in politics, lunatics, woodtics. Like, think about Arnold Schwarzenegger is a perfect example. LeBron James, Donald Trump. You may not like that name. I love that name. But guess what? Extreme, amazing, and accomplished so much in his life. So almost every single person that has an extreme life or a lifestyle that's crazy, Jeff Bezos, man, Elon Musk, these are extremists. And w the problem I have is this. It's nothing wrong with being, hey, Mike, I don't want to be – an extremist, I don't want to be all in. Nothing wrong with that. But if you want to have an extreme lifestyle, it's going to require an extreme work ethic. It's going to require an extreme mindset. It's going to require, you know, days where people look at you as like, this guy is sick. Like, you remember, he used to call me, people used to call me, I, they thought I was sick that I was so, work, I was a workaholic. True, true or not true? 
They thought I was sick. They thought I was unhealthy. Like, why is he so grinding? Like, when is enough enough? It's not enough. Not because, I'm not working for money. I'm working because I enjoy the I mean, hustle. Is there is there enough though? Does it ever get to? A Absolutely. Day? I'm I'm at a place right now where I don't have to like. I'm, I I feel good. I feel content. I'm happy, right? But I'm not satisfied with where I'm at because I have so much potential. But I'm willing to work. Like this year is gonna be a crazy year. I'm excited. I'm pumped up, and I'm pumped to do what I need to do and work and push and shove and grind. Not for an extra couple of dollars, bro. An extra couple of dollars. Okay, I get a nicer house. Okay, I get a nicer car. You get a nicer this. You know. That's not why I'm pushing myself too. Is because I want to push myself to the extreme potential that I know I can. But what if, what about unhealthy things? I mean, obviously, I think I know what you're gonna say, but like people who drink, you know, if I mean, they're an extremist, they're gonna drink. I to agree the extreme. with you. That's why. That. Yeah. Why do you think I don't drink? Why do you think I don't smoke? Why do you think I don't do those things? Because I know myself. I know that I'm a, I have an extreme personality. So if I'm gonna try something, I'm gonna go all the fucking way in. So just imagine me smoking weed every fucking day, right? God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. Drinking alcohol every single day, God forbid. I, I don't touch little things because I know that if I like it, guess what happens? I, I don't do things like, I give you an example. I haven't played video games in like three weeks. Why is that? So it's a great game that's coming out. I came out, Call of Duty, all this stuff. I just know the second I play one day, I just want to play the next day, the next day. And I want to get so good. I want to get to the ranks. I want to get higher and better. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm playing fucking seven hours in a day and that, it gets addicting, right? I may have an addictive personality, and I'm okay with that, and I understand that, but I'm addicted to positive sh**. What about, how would you, what's your view then on somebody who's like Buddhist monk, who's like simplicity rules their life, and they, and they, and they, they live their life based around simplicity? As much as you think that I love complexity, I'm actually living a very simple life too, because I don't like to add, like I give you an example, I hate adding more bills and more headaches. Like I know people that have like four or five cars. I'm like, I don't want to deal with that even if I have to pay someone, like, I don't want to, I have one truck and I'm okay with that. Like, I don't need two, three cars. I don't need two, I, bro, I used to live in New York. Remember this? When we used to live, I used to live in New York and I used to live but here. But Buddhist, it's not just about lifestyle. I mean, it's about, um. Your mind. Your mind and your emotions, you know, they never get too high, never get too low. They kind of live yeah, you, in you, the middle. You can, you, you can, I think it's, it's a great way if you want to live the life. I just have, I've had the most craziest lows in my life to the point where I was like, I didn't think I was going to live to the points where I had crazy highs. Like, life highs. Like, 2019 was a high for me, right? I remember those moments in my life where I was like, wow, right? Or when you have sex with someone that you truly love or having fun or whatever, maybe you have those highs, right? So I've had those highs. I've had those lows. You could be in equilibrium, but, like, if you think about it, like— Is what's equilibrium the... a bad thing? No. What I'm about at... balance? I think that you cannot have really balance because— it's very difficult because a lot of areas of your life are growing. Some of them are not growing. So you cannot, like, it's very difficult to work in all areas of your life every single moment of your day. So I try to focus on everything I can in my day-to-day, -day, like spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, recreational, relational, financial. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Like, there's a lot of areas that may be going great for you at one moment and some areas that are not. So you're never going to be in balance, but you're always going to be pushing yourself and striving to have that perfection or equilibrium or balance or whatever it may be. So do I think that you can have balance? You can, but it's very difficult to obtain that, you know? So I think all of us as human beings are striving to have that well-balanced out life. But dude, life is not in balance. I mean, you can have a fucking car accident tomorrow. Boom, something fucking changes out of whack. You can have a bill that comes out of nowhere. Like today, I had some fucking company charge me a thousand bucks out of nowhere. I'm like, what the going on, bro? That was way out of balance, right? So I had to spend 20 minutes with my bank saying, hey, who the f charged me a thousand bucks? That was not what I wanted to happen, right? So, you know, so thank God I have, you know, a, a, a good banks and stuff like that to take care of that. But things happen out of nowhere. Like, shit happens. Health, wealth, relationships. Those are three main areas of most people's lives that can go out of whack out of nowhere. And you don't know what's going to happen, right? So you got to be prepared for that. So I, I don't think that balance is the right word. But what I do think is that you go all in all areas of your life. Like, I don't sit there and say, oh, this month I'm going to worry about my finances while my health de decays. Like, I'm not that guy. You know me, bro. I go to the gym. I take care of my life in different compartments. I compartmentalize everything, and I try to work on everything I possibly can. Like, I'm going to travel this week, and uh, I'm going to uh, Nicaragua. I'm going to uh, Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador, four countries, with me and my brother. Um, and we're going to have a blast. We're going to have an amazing time there. And we're going to have great, great connection, relationship together. Like, it's going to be amazing, but that's the recreational side of my life. Whereas in my 20s, I didn't focus on recreation at all, bro. I was very minimal. People just say, you don't like to have fun? Now it's like, I have fun. Now I do shit that people can't even fucking do whenever they want to do it, you know? So I've earned that, so to say, but I'm always conscious of that, conscious that I need to go out there and hustle. I need to go out there and grow because I don't want to get stuck in a spot where I'm, like, having too much fun and I slack off on other areas of my life like most people do. Because this is Miami, bro. Everybody in Miami is having a fucking blast. It seems like they're not working, but they're making money. I don't know what they're doing. 
It doesn't seem right, right? But I know for a fact that that part is going to end. Like, I live in my building. I see a lot of people move in and a lot of people move out. Very few people stay there for a very long time. Like, very few people you think that are making money are making fucking money. It's fucking crazy, right? So anyway, that's one of my, my opinions about balance, you know? But um, being obsessive and extremist in a lot of my belief systems, I think it helps. But I also think that this is another thing I want to tell you. I think sometimes being an extremist, I'm going to go against my, my, my ideology, but I think sometimes being an extremist also hurts you because you believe something so deeply, so dearly to yourself, like to your heart, like you believe it. And it's so deep-rooted inside of you that you never want to change your belief system about that. And what I always say is that you need to challenge your belief system, which is why I love hanging around you because you're completely different than me and you give me a lot of different perspective. And I like, like I, I would love to sit down and have a conversation with a communist because a communist, I'm not saying you are a communist, I'm just saying, I would love to sit down and have a, uh, <laughs> I love to sit down and have a conversation with a communist because he may not have the right ideology that will work for society maybe, but there may be some good points that come out of communism you can utilize to help capitalism become better. So I always think there's always a positive you can take from someone, and that's why I like not 100% believing something 100% because you never know, which is why in the Jewish religion, by the way, it tells us to always question everything. You know yeah, what I mean? I, I don't know if you do that. Top of, probably. I think on top of all that, um, there's something to be said about individualism where you know, everyone's unique and everyone has their nuances and there's small differences in everything in life, especially people. So... Um, when you're an extremist, I think it kind of like blocks some of those things out because it doesn't leave as much room for nuances for things. Because hundred percent, you're like all the way on one side or all the way on the other. Whereas I think sometimes, I think, I, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm just gonna say I think that there's there's life is about the nuances, life is about the small differences sometimes. Um, so when you when you have a little bit more gray area, you're a little bit more. Uh, Attentive, or you know, you could be more subtle towards those small differences. I so, mean, I, I listen, like I said, I like to hear different perspectives, and I've just been living my life in this very extreme way. Maybe there's a lot of areas of my life that are amazing to be extreme in, and maybe there's some areas that you need to be a little bit gray in. I don't know the answers, I'm not God, but I do know this being an extremist has helped me in so many areas in my life and finances 100% because I think that. You cannot make it to the high levels of success unless you have an extreme mindset because most people live a very average Mickey Mouse life, and they're okay with that. Or they may not be okay with it, but they're not willing to do anything to change their lifestyle a little bit. So I just know that I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to have extreme hours in the field. Like if you tell someone, what do you do for work? Like if someone asks you, what do you do for work? Oh, I knock on doors. They'd be like, what the f That's weird. They probably think you don't even make that much money. But they don't realize that door-to-door -door sales, you can make millions of dollars doing that if you're willing to grind and hustle, right? So it's just funny because I'm, I'm okay with being that extreme and being laughed at a little bit because I want to accomplish my goals and my dreams, right? And I'm okay with being a little bit extreme. I'm okay with working my ass off for 10 years straight or five years straight to accomplish a goal. You know, sometimes we underestimate what it takes to accomplish a goal. We're not, we're not willing to do what it takes. Do you think, though, that that mindset might, um, you know, as you get older, you know, get into your 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, do you think that, your mindset will change on some of those things? Maybe, but I think that I would never look back in my 20s and say I wasted it. Because you might say, Mike, you could have been to all these tr countries that you've been to. I've been to 20 something countries. Like, uh, after this trip, I'll be at 24 countries. Think about that, right? Most people don't even go to three countries. Like, an average person sees three countries a, uh, their lifetime. Well, either travel a lot or don't travel. Yeah, it's either you travel or you don't travel. Most people see a couple of countries. They go to Mexico, can you know, they go to Canada, whatever, but they don't really see the world, right? Um, so I've been to many, many places in the world. And you might say, Michael, in your 20s, you wasted your life. No, I didn't. I was able to see 20-something countries in less than three years. And I think that was way more fun. And I did it with money in my pocket. I wasn't fucking doing backpacking and eating ramen noodles and fucking living in hostels. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I actually did it in four-star, five-star hotels. I traveled without even thinking about buying anything. Like, I did it the right way where it was, it was, it was awesome. I, w I remember I went to, uh, I went to uh, 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 Egypt. We're staying in the Ritz-Carlton. We stayed, uh, uh, what's that called? I forget what it is, the Four Seasons. The greatest Four Seasons and crazy in the Red Sea. Like, Four Seasons is expensive, bro. Like, if anything about it, about Four Seasons, it's a five-star, luxurious, like, it's amazing, right? We went to uh, 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 some other places. I don't know where. I've been all over the place, right? But if I would have done it when I was 21, 22, I may have not done it that large. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it's just amazing to know that I busted my titties off in my 20s. And in my 30s, I can do whatever the fuck I want. And some people, you might have to bust yourself in your 20s and your 30s. And it's okay. Sometimes you got to bust your ass for 20s, 30s, and 40s. It, that may be your path. It doesn't, it, everyone's different. I just know that for me, 
I'm okay with suffering in the beginning and having a reward later on. I'm okay with suffering. I'm okay with, I'm okay with going through pain. And I think a lot of people are afraid of pain. So when you have that all-in mentality, you don't give a shit about the pain. You just go and do it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know about your experience, but like, you know, you've been, you've been in sales for a long time, but like, you've seen so many people that have a big mouth. Oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Why don't they do it? Why don't they go all in? What is it that stops them, in your opinion? I mean, I, I, again, I think there's, there's so many factors and, you know, so many different personalities. I think the people that talk the most just create habits of mostly talk, you know. It's just, that's just what they've gotten accustomed to doing, and they've lied to themselves for so long that they don't even realize that they're doing that, right? That's why I always say, like, that's why I me, I know you don't like hitting goals, per se. You set goals to give you a direction. But for me, I think sometimes hitting a goal gives you um, – it, it kind of creates the habit of being honest with yourself because you, you say you're going to do something and then you do it. When you do that enough times, you believe that you're the kind of person that does what you say. So the people that talk a lot, I think, are just in the habit of not doing what they say. And they don't even realize it because they do it for so long. They just talk, 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 and then – Let know, me ask you this. Much. What is so wrong with going all in on your relationship with your spouse? What is so wrong with going all in in business? Like what, what do you get by going half in? Um, well, I think there's a few answers to that. I think yeah. number one, when it comes to relationships, a lot of people are protective of themselves. Like I, I am, uh, in a situation where I'm kind of a little bit protective to go all in on something because I don't want my heart to get broken. So sometimes when you go all in on something, you leave yourself more vulnerable because you put your heart and soul into something. And if it doesn't work out, you, you're left vulnerable. So I think some people protect themselves with that mindset. I think some people are too protective where they never go all in because they're afraid to hurt themselves. You want to hear something crazy about that? One of my mentors told me recently, and she said, it's better to love and get hurt than to not love and never get hurt. I've been and, saying that I know. to you for years. I know. It's better I know. to love and lose than to not love at all. Correct. 100%. Yeah. So it's better to just go all in. Like, I'm, you know, if I'm going to my next relationship, I'm going all in. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? If I don't go all in, what's the point? I'm going to go half ass. Let's play that game. It's not, it doesn't make any sense. I think a lot of men and a lot of women these days, and this is be amazing. I, I, TikTok, YouTube may disagree with me, but I think a lot of men and a lot of women are afraid of committing because they're afraid of getting hurt and they're afraid of going all in because they're, they're programmed by society, by TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all these platforms to sit there and worry about yourself. It's always about protecting you and well, being selfish and being about protecting your inner self. Instead, why not be thinking about the other person going all in, committing, do whatever the f*** you can to make that person smile, be happy, whatever it may be. And by default, if you do that, they're also going to want to take care of you. But you listen, it's a risk. But it's worth the risk, which a lot of young folks are not willing to do so. I wish, I wish, I wish I fell in love with someone when I'm in my early 20s. Because it would have been like, because remember, in your early 20s, what do you do? You fall in love blindly, right? Now I'm 32, you got to kind of fall in love, what? Logically a little, because you're so smart, you know all this shit. Instead, you should be just going with your heart, going all in, feeling good about the person, doing whatever you can to make that person 100% you know, satisfied and with their needs, and by default, you'll be taken care of. That's my opinion. And I think a lot of young people nowadays, they're not willing to do so because they get distracted by booties and Instagram models all the time. It's crazy. I'm telling you. People don't want to commit because they got so many fucking options. They got yeah. so many, or they think they there's got so many options. A, uh, they think. Psychological, or there's a there's psychology to that where there's this study where People think that having more options makes you feel better because you have a lot of options, but actually it creates more remorse because you always feel like you've picked the wrong thing. Oh, so, so sometimes powerful. you just um, sometimes you just need to have two or three options and then choose one as opposed to, you know, they say like if you walk into a candy store and there's a million candies, you're always going to walk out thinking you should have got something else. But Facts. the restaurants sometimes that have like four really good meals – they actually sometimes do better than the restaurants with like a hundred different options because, you know, you pick one and you you end up you end up um, liking it or, or enjoying it because that you know you don't feel like you have that um, fear. It's, you of know what's crazy? Out. You look, there's a there's a restaurant called Out uh, In and Out in freaking California, right? It's a burger spot, and they don't have a big menu, very small menu, and guess what? Very successful. It's, I don't know if uh, you guys, when I go to a restaurant, they got a thousand things on the menu, like a, like some diners. So would you say what's more extreme, though, having a million items or just going all in on a few items? I'd rather go all in on a few items. I'd rather you go all in on a few items. As a matter of fact, having too much going on, it just confuses the shit out of you as a person. You but I been, think it's more extreme to do that in a sense. You're like, ah. Oh, either or is extreme. E yeah. Either having too little is an extreme or having too much is an extreme. 
Pick your extreme. So companies with one product. It depends. That's the extreme. But if that product doesn't do well, you're... Right? So it depends. But listen, look at look at the most successful companies out there. Not every product... You don't have to have 20,000 products. They start off with one thing. And then eventually, once they got really good, they went to the second thing. Like if you look at Apple. Apple didn't become successful by making headphones and all this other shit. Their main focus was the computer. Then they got so good, they created the iPad. Or sorry, not the iPad, the iPod. Or the Nano. Then it was the iPod Touch. Then it was the phone. Then it blew up. Then now it was the iPad. Like, there's always something they focused on, and that's what made them great. But in the beginning, you got to focus on one thing. Um, just a, a thought that popped in my head. I think another reason why a lot of people stray away from being an extremist is um, like conformity. A lot of people, Ooh. you know... A, an extremist typically is somebody who is on the outskirts or somebody who is, you know, a few standard deviations away from the norm, whereas most people kind of follow what most other people do. So I think maybe there's a fear of, um, you know, standing out too much or being an outcast, um, which is an that's argument to be an extremist. To I mean, say, that's you, know, what, okay. you shouldn't be afraid to stand out. You shouldn't be 100%. afraid to... You know, I know I've you always, say standing I've always, out is a good thing. Yeah, I've though. always st stood out. Like, I, I want to tell you guys something. I want you to listen to me very, very carefully. Nobody talks like you. Nobody walks like you. Nobody smells like you. Nobody looks like you. Nobody, no, nobody does anything like you. Think about that. You are the only person since the beginning of time that has been who you are. So you already are standing out. But what happens is, is that everyone's trying to be like somebody else or blend in because you're so different that you want to start to blend in, which is what happens usually. We always want what we cannot have, right? So if you are not, you are not like anyone else, now you want to be like everybody else. But if you just embrace the difference, embrace being different, embrace your uniqueness. Like I have a funny laugh. Listen, when I do my videos and Duran or, or Ben or whoever else is editing the videos, they put me in the videos and I laugh. I love that. And people I think love it too. That's like my, like, that's my sign right there. I laugh and I have a blast about it. And it's, it just makes me fucking, like when I hear some fucking crazy shit, I just explode. That's me. And if you don't like it, that sucks to be you, bro. Sucks to be you because I love who I am and what I'm about. And all I'm looking for and all you should be looking for is to find that one individual that you want to call a soulmate, partner, best friend, whatever you want to call that, that actually accepts you for who you are. Every person, every single person I've ever talked to in my entire life, every friend, every partner, I've always acted like me. Because if they don't like me in the beginning, why the f*** would they like me later on? Like, why not? So I'd rather them know who I am in the beginning and accept me for who I am. And if not, <laughs> deuces. So I don't mind being that extreme person. I don't mind being different. I don't mind being weird. I don't mind being wild. I don't mind being any of those things. Because to me, being the black sheep is the most beautiful thing on the planet. I am nobody. Nobody's like me. I am special. And the day that I die, the world will never see a Michael again. Or are you. So be proud of that. Be excited about that. Be embrace that. Like I see so many people trying to ch surgeries and Botox and schmotox all this. Sh Why? To look like who? To copy some image? Be you. Now, if you want to look pretty for yourself, you want to make it for yourself, that's fine. But a lot of people they don't do it for themselves. Like I go to the gym for me. I love going to the gym. I don't know about you, bro. I love. You got to start going to the gym. I know you made a couple, couple weeks promises, but I, I love going to the gym. The gym to me is my sanctuary. I do it for one person. For me. When I go to my bathroom, when I look into the mirror, I come out of the shower and I look at myself naked, I'm like, wow. That's amazing, bro. Look where you've come. You were skinny, you were scrawny, you were small, you were tiny. Now look at you, bro. Fucking guns. You're fucking ready to rock and roll. I look fucking good for me. Certain, I look good for me. Certain parts are still small, though. Not in my situation. I got lucky. I'm blessed and lucky. <laughs> look at this guy. I got jokes, right? But think, think about that. Think about that, right? So it's very important to believe and love who you are and be excited about that. And it's okay to be a little bit on the extreme side. Extreme! <laughs> extreme! <laughs> anyway, listen. Do me a solid. Subscribe to the channel. Like, comment, and share this with a friend because we want to inspire the world. We want to get to 100,000 plus subscribers on YouTube, man. We're going to do it. We need your help. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Extreme!